Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about the Michael addition, which is a reaction between the alpha-beta unsaturated compound and an enolate that we are going to get from some sort of a carbonyl. As a result of this reaction, we are typically going to be seeing the formation of the 1,5-dicarbonyl, which can be a diketone or maybe an ester of some sort. And before we go into the details of the Michael addition mechanism, let's look at the two different types of nucleophilic attack that the uh, alpha-beta unsaturated compounds can exhibit. In one case, our nucleophile can attack our carbonyl directly, pushing the electrons up onto the oxygen, making a new carbon nucleophile bond right over here between the carbon of our carbonyl, or what used to be a carbonyl, and the incoming nucleophile. And if we number our conjugated system starting from the oxygen as atoms 1, 2, 3, and 4, that means that our nucleophile in this case is adding to a carbon or atom number 2 in the system. So if we do the acidic or aqueous workup after that, we are going to get this proton over here at the atom number 1, which is our oxygen, and the nucleophile at the atom number 2, which is carbon. So this type of addition to an alpha-beta unsaturated compound is typically referred to as the 1-2 addition. However, there is another nucleophilic attack that is possible, and in that other nucleophilic attack, the nucleophile is actually going to be attacking the beta position of our alpha-beta unsaturated compound, cascading electrons all the way to the oxygen, giving us the following enolate intermediate, where the new bond that we have just created is right over here, and if we number our atoms in the same fashion how we did it before, the oxygen is going to be number one, but now that carbon bearing the new bond to a nucleophile, that is our atom number four. So after our acidic workup, we are going to get this enol, where the oxygen has a hydrogen, so the oxygen is a carbon number one, and the nucleophile is attached to a carbon number four. Of course, this is not the final product, because, as we know, unless enols are somehow stabilized, enols are not particularly stable, so we are going to undergo a quick keto-enol totomerism, making the corresponding carbonyl. However, because in our intermediate that we may not even see or consider here, we do have the hydrogen on atom number one and nucleophile at atom number four, this type of addition is often called 1-4 addition, although more and more textbooks and instructors start using the term conjugate addition, which is a less confusing and probably more appropriate term in this case. So I'm going to be using the term the conjugate addition rather than 1-4 addition for the most part. And here is something really interesting. The nature of our addition, whether it's a 1-2 addition or direct addition or the conjugate addition, the nature of that addition depends on the nature of our nucleophile. And the two terms that you are going to be here when dealing with the nucleophiles are going to be the hard nucleophiles and the soft nucleophiles. And while this classification does have its own flaws, we are still using it traditionally up to this date, so that is what you are most commonly going to be hearing within the scope of your course. So when it comes to our hard nucleophiles, we are typically going to be seeing species like the uh, R-magnesium bromide, organomagnesium compounds, aka green urea, agents or organolithium compounds. When it comes to the soft nucleophiles, on the other hand, the common examples are going to be something like organocuprates, like Gilman reagents, or enolates. And I will highlight enolates here because that is precisely what we are talking about in this video. And here is the deal. The hard nucleophiles tend to go for the 1-2 addition, or the direct addition onto your carbonyl, while soft nucleophiles will typically go for the conjugate addition, or 1-4 addition. And the conjugate addition of enolate species to the alpha-beta unsaturated compounds is known as Michael addition, so here we are. Now, a couple more terms that you got to know before we can proceed is Michael donor and Michael acceptor. In the Michael addition reaction, the Michael donor 
donor is going to be our nucleophile, while the Michael acceptor is going to be our electrophile, our alpha-beta unsaturated compound. And when it comes to our acceptor, generally speaking, nearly any alpha-beta unsaturated compound will do. We can have a conjugated ketone like that, or we can have a conjugated ester, or we can even have diesters like that. And probably the only exception to this general rule is going to be conjugated aldehydes. Those guys, the aldehyde functional group itself, is a little bit too electrophilic, so aldehydes tend to do the one-to addition regardless of which nucleophile you're going to throw at it. But ketones and carboxylic acid derivatives like esters, amides, nitriles, you name it, all of that is a fair game. Likewise, when it comes to our nucleophiles, not all nucleophiles are equally good in this reaction either. The general rule of thumb is that the more resonance stabilized the nucleophile is, the better it is in this particular reaction. So the nucleophiles where the negative charge is stabilized by at least two electron withdrawing groups are excellent Michael donors, while enolates that are only stabilized by one electron group can still work in most cases, but they're not as good and they will already start to give you a 1-2 direct addition and other possible side reactions. So when possible, we should avoid those and go with the more stabilized nucleophiles. And this part might feel a little bit counterintuitive that the more stable nucleophile, which is typically going to be a less reactive nucleophile, is better in this reaction. But the explanation here is rooted in the energy of the molecular orbitals, the Homo Luma orbitals, that are going to be participating between our uh, species, and that goes a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but just so you know, there is a good reason why less reactive, more stable enolates are better in this reaction. For now, just remember that as a rule. And so now, when you are armed with all the bits and pieces of the terminology and the nature of the interactions that we are going to have in this reaction, let's look at the mechanism of the reaction. So for my mechanism here, I'm going to use the alpha-beta unsaturated compound, a fairly simple one, and I'm going to do the reaction with malonic ester over here in the presence of sodium ethoxide as my base. And as the most acidic position in my entire system over here is going to be the position in between the carbonyls and my malonic ester, my step number one here is going to be the enolization of the malonic ester, giving us the corresponding enolate, which is going to be our nucleophile, or if you like, we could call it Michael Donner. And so the next step in this reaction is going to be reaction between our nucleophile, our Michael Donner, and our acceptor, which is going to be our alpha-beta unsaturated compound. So I'm going to draw my electrophile and I will show my cascade of the electron density going from my nucleophile all the way to my electrophile, making a new carbon carbon bond between the alpha position between my carbonyls and the beta position of my alpha beta unsaturated compound, giving me the following enolate as my product, and of course the new bond that I have just formed is right over here. And the last thing that is left for us here is to do the acidic workup, so I'm going to bring some aqueous acid, that aqueous acid is going to protonate our enolate, giving us our final product. And you can always double check that you did get the correct product by remembering that the Michael addition is always going to give you a 1,5 dicarbonyl, so if you count the distance between your newly acquired carbonyl and the molecule and one of the old carbonyls, it's always going to be a 5 carbon chain. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon chain in this direction, or 5-carbon chain in the other direction. So I know I didn't lose any atoms, and I did get uh, the correct molecule, in fact. And I hope you guys are ready for some examples, because I have a few awesome ones for you. So in my first reaction, I have a 1,3-dicarbonyl reacting with the alpha-beta unsaturated ester 
in the presence of a base. Probably one of the most important things that you always have to keep in mind when it comes to chemistry of enols and enolates is your acid-base chemistry and the most acidic position in all of your molecules. Like in the example where I discussed the mechanism, here the most acidic position is in between my carbonyls in my 1,3-cyclohexane dione starting material. Which means that the very first thing that is going to happen in this reaction is going to be my base coming in, deprotonating this position and making the corresponding enolate looking like this. Now we have our enolate, which is going to be our nucleophile. So I'm going to bring my electrophile and I will show the nucleophilic attack from my nucleophile to my electrophile, which in this particular case, going to make a new carbon-carbon bond between this alpha position between my carbonyls and the beta position of my alpha-beta unsaturated compound, giving me the following intermediate, where my new bond is right over here. And the last thing that is left for us here is to do our acidic workup. So I'm going to bring my aqueous acid and I will show how this aqueous acid going to protonate my enolate, giving me my final product looking like this. Easy so far? All right. How about this reaction then? So in this case, again, my analysis is going to start with finding the most acidic position to enolize. And among all of these molecules, that is again going to be this position between my carbonyls. So step number one, I'm going to bring my ethoxide and enolize that position, giving me the corresponding enolate, which is going to be my nucleophile. Next, I'm going to bring my electrophile, which is my alpha-beta unsaturated compound, and do a nucleophilic attack on that compound, like so, making a new carbon-carbon bond between the alpha position between my carbonyls and the beta position of my alpha-beta unsaturated compound, making the following enolate intermediate, giving me my final product after we do our acidic workup. Well, then how about this one? In this case, we have our alpha-beta unsaturated compound and we have our other carbonyl as a part of the same molecule, which means that in this case we are looking at some sort of intramolecular reaction and who doesn't love the intramolecular shenanigans. So in this case, I don't have a clearly most acidic position in the molecule, but what I do have is the part of the molecule which is the alpha-beta unsaturated compound, which means that I would have to analyze the other side of the molecule, namely this alpha position next to my other carbonyl. So I'm going to have the ethoxide come in, pull one of those protons off, giving us the corresponding enolate, and now we are going to have our intramolecular reaction by bringing our electrons all the way across the molecule like so, doing this attack, and in this case, we are going to make a new carbon-carbon bond between this atom and this one, which means that at the end, I'm going to end up with one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. So the way I'm going to draw my product here, or rather I should say intermediate after this step, is I will start by showing a six-membered ring, I will number all of my atoms, and the new bond that I have just made is this bond between atoms one and six, Next, the bond between my atoms 2 and 3 is now going to be a double bond. Atom number 3 will have a negatively charged oxygen connected to that, so I'm going to draw that guy. Then, on carbon number 6, I'm going to have this part of the molecule, essentially the rest of my molecule, so I'm going to draw that phenyl group with the carbonyl. And, as per usual, the very last part here is going to be the acidic workup, so I'm going to show how uh, the aqueous acid going to protonate my enolate, giving me my final product looking like this. So yeah, the intramolecular Michael addition like that is a very real possibility, so be on the lookout for something like that on the test. And I have one more fun example for you guys. Now we have the uh, alpha-beta unsaturated compound where we have 
one side where we have this alpha beta unsaturated conjugated system and we have the second side where we also have the alpha beta unsaturated compound so that is essentially a double Michael acceptor and you know the more the merrier so the most acidic protons in this case are going to be the hydrogens right between my two nitrile groups nitriles are fairly decent electron withdrawing groups as well and if we have two of those they are going to give us an enolate like compound because they will be able to stabilize that negative charge without any problems and my very first step in this reaction is going to be the deprotonation of my um, nitrile over here giving me the following nucleophile and I can use my nitriles to show the resonance stabilization of this negative charge which would look like that and while that is not a real enolate because well we don't have any oxygen there as I've mentioned nitriles are perfectly fine electron withdrawing groups so they can quite easily stabilize that negative charge as well so now when I have my nucleophile I'm gonna go ahead and bring my electrophile over here and show that nucleophilic attack onto one of my sides of the molecule and in this case my enolate intermediate is going to look like that but here is something fun that I didn't mention in any of my previous examples since I still technically have this fairly acidic proton in my molecule my enolate will quickly reach an equilibrium point where that position is deprotonated instead of my enolate in all of my previous examples I didn't really mention anything about this equilibrium because it wasn't really important and it didn't really change anything but in this case it will be very important because now we actually have another Michael acceptor in the molecule and we have a perfect Michael donor right there as well so now we can show the attack from this nucleophile onto our electrophile making another carbon carbon bond between this one and this carbon making a one two three four five six membered ring making the following enolate which after the acidic workup going to give us the final product looking like this so reaction might have looked innocent to begin with but things escalated quickly here and we ended up with another intramolecular Michael addition so always double check if your reaction can keep on going because if it can it will so what do you folks think about the Michael addition do you like this reaction it is actually extremely extremely useful for synthetic purposes so you are definitely going to see that on your final exam I can guarantee that so do make sure you know this mechanism and as always thank you for watching if you learned something new today hit the like button and let me know about that in the comments below check out this video next and I will see you next time